team will again be in action on Tuesday night against the men's national team of the United States of America. In the ground of Premier League, Kumasi Asante Kotoko won back-to-back -back matches. They defeated uh, Mediona Stars by one goal to zero, and it appears Prosper Nathan Ogum has found his voice speaking big. He says that his boys are gradually finding their confidence. There were also lots of other international friendlies that were played. We have, um, uh, oh, there's also the Manchester United takeover. I don't know where Daniel, <laughs> what Daniel Crato will make of all this. Uh, I've seen a tweet from uh, Christopher Nimley who already says that he's going to denounce himself as a Manchester United fan if um, Rick Life uh, decides to buy shares with the Manchester United. So tonight on Sports Zone, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, so you'd have to stay with us here. This show is probably brought to you by um, uh, it's your friend is simple. It's kind of friend thing. Fight better, eh? Fight better. Do you know how to bet? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Read the teenage story. <laughs> <laughs> so with one CDs and a dream bet code for weekday games, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday games, log into Pride Bet and click on Bet Sleep. If you don't have Pride Bet account, register now. In the Bet uh, Sleep, enter the code 226G8. Stake one Ghana cities and stand a chance to win over 20,000 Ghana cities. So simply register with Pride Bet and get to enter the free daily spo uh, sports quiz to win 25,000 Ghana cities every single day. And what are you waiting for? Visit pridebet.com.gh now to play. All new players also get 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bra Yendi Agro here. And and I give me three and ba ba me catchy correct correct. Fried bird. Why you laughing, Vasa? Who teach you, Anna? Teach you. What color do you teach you? And also, um, oh, hunters, <laughs> hunters, hunters. Um, they say that introducing hunters real apple cider. A crisp and refreshing beverage that's perfect for any occasion. Made from hand-picked apples and crafted using traditional techniques, Hunter's Real Apple Cider is bursting with natural apple flavors and a hint in sweetness. Unlike other ciders, Hunter's Real Apple Cider is made from 100% pure apple juice with no other sugar or artificial flavors. Whether you are looking for a chilled, refreshing drink on a hot, sunny day or warming beverage during the cold months, Hunter's Real Apple Cider is a perfect choice. Enjoy it on its own or pair it with your favorite meal for a delicious and satisfying experience. Experience the true taste of real apples in every sip with Hunter's Real Apple Cider. Hunter's uh, Apple Cider, it is got real apples, another quality product ah, by Casa Pepe. So for what purchase, you call on 026-235-1251. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I'll be introducing my guest and uh, we'll also uh, be getting into the conversation, talk about how the Black Stars have a defeat we might just touch on other off-field issues that has to do with one of our colleagues who was uh, reportedly attacked or physically assaulted in the USA before their friendly match against Mexico. Uh, we are back shortly. Welcome back. From that long break, we render an unqualified apology for uh, going for that long break, but we are finally here to bring you a rather conversation of the Black Stars' defeat against Mexico. Marcia Santi got back to back wins in the Ghana Premier League. And also, Manchester United take over. Um, uh, Saudi billionaire says that uh, he's no longer interested, so he has withdrawn. But um, Manchester United fans uh, probably expected a Saudi to cover the club because money was going to flow, billions was going to flow, but unfortunately. That's no longer going to happen. I can look at the face of Daniel Cranton and, and see a very disheartened Manchester United fan. I don't care. This, this is, this is support the club. I don't care. He's Qatari. He's not Saudi. He's Qatari. I don't care if you buy a Jugo. So you still support Manchester United? I support Ghana, Black Stars. 
<laughs> show of other brought to you by uh, syntax what is a, your preferred uh, color of tank um, syntax has it what guarantee do you want syntax has it what kind of inner layer do you want double triple quadruple as many inner layers as you want syntax has it too so remember no matter your water needs syntax has it Syntex tank is uh, strong, uh, tough. We have over 300 agents nationwide. So to order a tank, you can call 0244-335168 or visit Syntex on social media at Syntex Ghana or shop online on www.syntex.com, gh.com to www.syntexgh.com. Syntex is uh, strong, is uh, tough. Um, the usual faces that you see here every Monday night, Sitio, is here. You're nodding your head. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Well. Looking forward to it. Please look to good. See. Thank you. When I grow up, I want to look like you. Oh, you're looking good as well. Thank you. And when I grow up, I want to look like this. This one? Yes. I am bad. Daniel, you look good with your boy. I know. So my opinion doesn't matter. It's a fact to your state. <laughs> 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 Daddy, mm. how are you? I'm very well. Let's talk about Black Stars. Let's talk about Black okay, Stars. Okay, let's talk about Black Stars. Yes. Black Stars lost. What happened? Uh, relax. Calm down. Trust the process. You will get better. He's talking like that boy who was preaching the National Science and Mass Quizzo. <laughs> For the Egyptians <laughs> you see today, you, you will see them no more. <laughs> No, I was not serious. Look, well, the most serious no. The, the black stars, serious, no. because I I watched that game. I watched the entire duration of that game, and I think in the early phases the black stars were in there. In the second half, it appeared Ghana lost track of what the Mexicans were doing. Um, I enjoy friendlies like this uh, against teams that are clearly superior. It's, it's always very important to test your uh, your standard against. Uh, Teams that are obviously better than you. Yeah. The Black Stars are still in the building process. Um, let's understand that from, was it like 2019 AFCON? It's like a new phase of the Black Stars that we are seeing. We are seeing new players coming in, it's been chopping, changing coaches here and there. So it's obviously going to take time to reach the heights of, of, of previous years. We've been through this period before. Yeah. It's, it's, and it, it's, it's hard to accept because, especially with this current generation, we've been used to success in some in, in, in to a certain, a certain degree, a certain degree. Yeah. so we are talking about afcon semi-finals what was it eight nine times in a row uh minimum was a semi-final in uh, at an afcon and when you go from that to you drop to round of 16 group stage exits it's quite difficult to 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 accept but again i'll say that we've been through this period before if you remember uh, the afcon 2000 where we co they went to quarter finals after that 2002 it was another right. Quarterfinals and those like quarterfinals were straight after group stages, so technically it was round of 16 this yeah. time. And then you go to 2004, we didn't qualify at all. 2006, we got kicked out in the group stages. In fact, we finished bottom. Zimbabwe beat mm -hmm. us in the last game. So, and then the following Afcon was the one at home. Then the semi final streak started semi finals, finals, semi finals, finals. So when you are building sometimes these things happen you need to go down you need to start from scratch and i'll and i'll repeat it look we have a we have a very good head coach who has some pedigree on on the international stage when i say international stage, i'm talking about the premier leagues he's 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 been there he's done that and again let's 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 shift away from watching names on papers and expecting them to to reproduce the sort of form that we see them do for, their, do for their clubs. It's two completely different things. You are building a team. It's not a collection of players that you are putting together. And all the top teams that are winning competitions, the top teams that are going far in the Afghans winning, they had time to go down and build the team. This Senegalese team wasn't built just, it's not by names. It's not just a collection of names. Because those names were there, what, eight years ago, they were not winning. Even beyond eight. Even years. beyond. They, they, they needed to take that time and work in that level of consistency. So for me, look, these things will take time. And it is always good to make your mistakes in friendlies like this. We all don't want the, the disaster of uh, 2021 to happen again next AFCON. 
So there are certain things that we need to see. There are certain things that we need, that need to be exposed in games like this for us to go forward and then correct them. So when we see things like that, it's just an opportunity. And again, you go back to the pedigree of the head coach. It is, it's only a fool who sees something that is not working and something that has clearly been exposed and will go and repeat it. So um, once we've seen these basic mistakes, these uh, sort of uh, shortcomings, we expect that in future we can quickly address them before the AFCON. And again, look, Charlie, we are not in the state to win the AFCON. We are not. You don't go from group stage straight to the AFCON trophy. We are not in the state to win it. What we can do is to build on, on what we started. And I feel like... We've been building on for how long? No, you see, it, there's, there's, there's a way to build. And the way to build involves consistency. Are we building the right way? I think we are building the right way. We have a, we have a nice young group of players infused with some experienced guys we have a very good head coach it will take time it is not magic it doesn't happen over time and i always give this example if you my you fans chelsea fans you say they should give ten hag and Poch time and these guys train with the players monday to friday every day and they spend months in the job if you calculate that against what the amount of time a national team coach has with his group has maximum like two training sessions before a match and he's played what this is what his fit or his sit game. Yeah. You don't expect to start seeing certain results by this time. It will take time. And if you are patient, there are so many examples that we can use. You can use a Senegal example. You can use an Algeria example. You can use a Morocco example. All these teams, it's not like Morocco were consistent for the last, what, five, six Afghans and they were reaching the final four. No. They went through a, a, a period and then they built and now they've come up on, on top. So if you want to get there, you have to prepare to sacrifice. And for me, uh, personally, I'm prepared. For the people who are complaining about the style of football, we told you from the beginning, this is Chris Hilton. You don't expect Pep Guardiola to come and be playing like Chris Hilton or, or Jose Mourinho. Let, let, let you don't me. expect Mourinho to come and be playing like Pep Guardiola. Everybody on <laughs> his philosophy. So let start me. enjoying it because it's not going to get any Let, let me listen to Sikyo now. And uh, many people have said that since Chris Hilton took over the Black Stars coaching job, the Black Stars appear to be producing performances they say are very uninspiring. Uh, stinkers. <laughs> and the honeymoon for Chris Hilton is over. I mean, if you go back through the archives of this program, I said when he got the job that he needs, he needs time. But while he takes that time, we need to start seeing signs that there is progress. I don't see any sign. The team can't defend. There's no coordination. There's no coercion. There's no style. Yeah, then he said, we know Chris Hilton. Minimum. Solidity at the back, minimum defensive structure, minimum difficult to break down. That is in his team. I mean, Ghana is considering almost every game that Chris Hilton has been at the helm. Ghana can't score goals. Forget about scoring goals. Ghana can't create chances under him. So, if we are to be confident in what Chris Hilton is doing, or what the new face of the Black Stars is, we need to start seeing the signs. We need to start going into games knowing that Ghana is a difficult team to crack. Ghana is a difficult team for people to, to beat. Down. We need to start going to the game knowing that maybe we don't have strikers to take chances, but we are creating those chances. We walk away from games without shots on targets, two shots on target, two shots all off target, one scrappy goal, considering goals against Central African Republic, Angola, considering goals against... And, and that is a genuine concern because I tell you, we've got an AFCON in January. Yeah. And when you're the national team coach of Ghana, there is no excuse about, yeah, you were out in the last AFCON in the group stage, so don't expect magic. No. It is Ghana. So we expect to see a certain level of performance. And this level is way below what Ghanaians expect. I know Chris has been here for six, but, but we should at least by now be seeing signs that, all right, so last year, if you want Ghana play, we couldn't do A. But now it looks like we can do A. So let's give it time so that it develops into B. What Otoadu's team produced, it's not very different from what Chris Hitchens' team is producing. Let's, let nobody lie to us. The performances we saw, the tragic performances we saw under Otoado and before Otto and Damilo, it's not very different from what you see under Chris. And that is why it's worrying. Because nobody can question the credentials of Chris. So what then is the problem? Right? That is, that, that is the genuine problem now. Because we've got very good players, I think, to be performing better than what we do perform. And that, that is where my concern is. We know we have problems with goal scoring. But we know we've got you know, defenders, I mean, even if you don't have them, set up your team in a way that is difficult for Mexico to, to score against. But look at the two goals Mexico scored. They were not necessarily well-read goals. Yeah. 
poor defending, poor structure. And that is coaching. When the structure is not good, every single player, no matter how brilliant they are, look average. So we have an average Mohamed Kudus in the Ghanaian shirt. We have an average player in Pate in the Ghanaian shirt. We have an average player perhaps sometimes in Jordan in the Ghanaian shirt. But when they turn up at their clubs, they are not average. They're so the coach, they, they are. So the coach needs to find a structure that, that, that gives us confidence that we are building on something. He's been here for what, six, seven games, and every single game has been a struggle. There hasn't been one single game that I would watch and say, quite clear, their team was very, very on the same page at all levels. We could build up from the back through midfield, or we could sustain pressure. We defend well in this group, in this phase, in this shape. Uh, these are patterns. In a, we've got no patterns when you're attacking. We've got absolutely no clear plan. We have no clue when you're on the ball. And I'm not trying to be harsh on Chris. I'm not saying Chris is not a good coach. He is. But quite clearly, whatever he's trying to pass down to the place is not sinking in. And that is why he has to up his game. And for me, his honeymoon is over. The time for him to, for us to give him time was in his first game, second game, third, third game. Now we need to see a coach who has had some time with the squad, has a fair idea of how he wants his team to play. And we can lose games. I'm okay. It's a friendly game. We can lose games. It's fine. We, we can lose a game by two. You can't even but, win every game. But, yes. But when we are losing, we still need to know exactly what we were trying to do in that game. So that we can say that, okay, this is how the team plays. And this is how the team has played in the last three outings. But this is how we lost. We absolutely have no clue how the Black Stars want to play under this coach or under the previous coaches before him. And that is where my worry is. I don't think we are making progress. So Chris doesn't inspire any kind of confidence. That's basically what you're saying. No, I'm saying Chris is a great manager, but I'm saying that every, before him, the team was playing almost similar. No, I get, no, I, no, I get that, but I'm I get that the point. I'm saying Chris hasn't taken the team to another level. Yeah. But how, you see, how is he going to take the team to another level? Or how are we going to see the team perform to a consistent level under head coaches when the average lifespan of the coach in the team is, what, nine months, nine, six... Otwadu came, he didn't spend a year. I'm, I'm not asking for the year spend I'm looking for France. No, 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 that, I'm looking for, that's, that's I'm looking for the sign. The, 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 I, need, I need to see, and I... Even under Otwadu, there were certain things you could clearly see that he wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. There were certain things. They were they were very clear. Against Nigeria, when we were, we were now were at the Moshe Dabula Stadium in Abuja, when he set up his team, you could clearly tell that this was a man who was not willing to concede. It was clear. And, 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 there's no shame, and, the, and there's no shame in that, because Nigeria would have hurt us if yeah. we went there to be expansive. Yeah. If we're going to play against Mexico, on a venue where they are very comfortable, I mean, Mexico are used to Astro or so half grass, half artificial pitches. You don't go and open up and play the way you played, especially when you have some of your best players around. What was he trying to achieve? Whatever he was trying to achieve, we didn't see the signs because we couldn't put anything together. And even for it, is, is it that's because you are, you, are, you are looking at it from what you wanted to see? No, no. I'm yeah, because say, if you are looking at it from the defensive point of view, especially yeah. in that first half, you can't tell me you didn't see that. We were, we were compact enough. We limited them in terms of creating chances. It's the second half that everything went down da downhill. So if it's about what you wanted to see, mm. I think you can see. Maybe you wanted to see it in a sustained period of time and you didn't see that. But no, I don't think it see? is fair to say you didn't see anything. Honestly, the first time, I, I, don't think, I don't think it was down to you. Ghana necessarily stopping Mexico from playing. In that first time, Mexico were poor as well. They, they were not, they, it's not like they were covering us open and we were, we were cutting out passes, we were defending in a way that we could. We were not. Mexico were in that first half, were a bit slow. And that's the problem I have with the Ghanaian team. Any team that moves the ball a bit quicker, we have no answers. And when Mexico started moving the ball a bit quicker, it was the, in the first half, we didn't, I didn't see Mexico trying so hard to break us down and we're so good in defending. I tell you what, in that game against Portugal in the first half, in that first half at the World Cup, that is what I think. That it's a structure that completely nullifies the opposition. I didn't see that in the game against Mexico. And what, once Mexico tried, got off a, a bit faster in that second half, we couldn't cope. It was the same structure, almost the same team and everything. Of course, change of personnel, somewhere around 60-something minutes. But my point simply is, I've not seen enough progress. What's the difference between the team that went out, went out of the game against Comoros and the AFCON? The way they played in that AFCOM and the way the team plays this now. You can't tell me you've seen significant progress. And we are talking about 2021 and the end of 2023. That was actually 2022. 2022, 2022 and the end of January 2022 and the so end of 2023. 
it's just too slow or it's nothing really significant is happening. And the AFCON, guys, the, all these friendly games are not for fun. The AFCON is in January. Mm -hmm. We have two World Cup qualifiers the, playing. The AFCON is in, forget about the World Cup qualifiers. You have a major tournament. Now, I'm actually thinking that. I'm thinking that those qualifiers yes. will also give Chris an opportunity to actually access, uh, assess his voice. No! How does he use the World Cup qualifiers to assess the players? These are the games. The World Cup qualifies absolutely those points. These are the games, USA and Mexico. That is what he's going to use to assess the players. The World Cup qualifies, he's going to go in there with players he's already assessed. He is confident and sure about to produce results. That's what I'm saying. He could have lost this game. How did he lose it? We were poor. We can't get the best out of Kudus. We can't get the best out of Pate. We still can't get the best out of Inaki. Semenyok, when he comes off the bench, is a monster. When he starts... He's like, you know, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> can you can really anyway. start standing by? I can see his player ratings, and I see two point five and uh, three and four. Only Gideon Mensah has four, but p people actually say Gideon Mensah had a very terrible game. I'm wondering how uh, Karim you explain four. it to us. Karim, uh, your marking scheme, for your marking scheme, uh, for your marking scheme. How did Gideon Mensah get get four points? Tawa had two point five. Uh, Sh um, Shindla had two point five. Kudu is 3.5, Semanyo 3, hey, 2.5. Charlie, your marking scheme will be high. Will you see see marking scheme with that, though? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us, uh, how did you arrive at these, these, these numbers? So basically, the conclusion is that all of them failed. <laughs> Wait, this is over what? Over 10. All okay. of them failed. So, so which mark will you give to Chris Hutin? Chris Hutin. Mm. 0 0.5. <laughs> Put all their ratings together and try to average that for him. Yes. <laughs> and divide by 12. <laughs> so, uh, take us through, take us through, number. So, uh, yes, as I said, basically the conclusion is that out rating them out of 10, everyone has failed. So, starting from Atizigi in a game that from the first half he was doing very well, especially with how he was playing with his foot, uh, his, his feet. Playing with both. And the balls were good, but when he was playing them out, nobody could hold them to give him some successful long balls as a goalkeeper. But looking at how he considered the first goal and the second goal, it's just a conclusion that his game overall is um, rated based on the goals he considered, especially the first one. He jumped and, f and fell where he, he started the jump. So it didn't look good. Then Joseph had uh, 28 minutes before he went out. Nothing really from that end. When he went out, nothing. Then Nicolas Opuk, he was really good for me until he gave away that second goal. Maybe we had hopes that we could have equalized and then he took the ball. He wanted to progress. Then he, g he gave it away and nobody could um, cover up for him. So the problem how he gave that ball away is that there were no progressors in the team. And he tried to take the initiative. And it backfired. We got punished for that. He got three. F why he got the three? That's maybe the fourth uh, highest in the game. Is because in the game he completed the most passes of any player in the game, 63. Then Steph uh, Stefan Ambrosius also he also completed 61 of the 66 passes he attempted. But basically, he wasn't really that out and out that you see that he's helping the team uh, make the moves and help transitions giving the balls out, they were not going. Then we come to Kinsley Schindler. The most important thing is that he was on the pitch to play football. But when the football was coming to him, he was covering his balls, <laughs> giving his back. <laughs> then um, so when Lozano wanted to score that goal, he gave his back to him. Then he faked him and shot it. At least he couldn't do anything. So he got 2.5. Then Elash Ousu started the game, played the full game, but really nothing to show, especially in progressing the ball forward. Then Thomas Party, nothing worked for him in the 45 minutes he was on the game. He couldn't uh, move the ball forward. He couldn't control the passes. It's either the ball is being taken away from him or he's giving away the pass. Then we come to Gideon Mensah. That's where a lot of the questions are. Looking at the game, we couldn't move the ball forward. But looking at the defending, Gideon Mensah as a player on the pitch, he was a player with the most tackles in that game. He won the most tackles, four out of five. In the game also, he completed 44 of the 50 passes he attempted. 
recovered possession 10 times and won 5 over 5 of the duels he contested in that game. Then Mohamed Kudus also tried a lot to progress the ball, but nothing really worked. Is either he's giving it away or trying to move it forward and he's getting taken away from him. Over dribbling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a summary of everything. <laughs> then we come to um, Antoine Semenyo. He was running all around like a headless chicken. Nothing really worked. Well, come on, that's, were, that's, 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 that's not too fair. That's, no, that's no, not, no, not too fair. No, but no, that's too what fair. I'm saying is that he was making the runs, but the balls were not coming, so he, he had nothing. To uh -huh. So you can you, you, you can put the I point that you can put the point that he didn't get the services that the was services. required. Yes. Uh -huh. but so then Peso so got three point five. If, you, if you are looking at all the sustained times we had the ball in the half of uh, Mexico. Pencil was very much involved in more than half of those balls that we had in the half of Mexico trying to score goals. So and products? I'm a bit confused. And for that, he created a chance that nobody was there. If we had, anybody had connected that, we could have taken the lead in the game and the results that we are getting now. Karim, I have a very, very important different. question for you. I, yes. I, th I think Karim's numbers are, are from elective mass. Cal Do you use calculus? Look, <laughs> in a game where Ghana field uh, to register a single shot on target. on target. I want to understand how the three attackers on the pitch mm -hmm. are scoring high. Are scoring higher than anybody else on the pitch. Like that is Kudus, Pencil, Semenyo. How are they getting 3.5 and 3? They, in fact, they have a combined 10. Yes. So, so they, <laughs> listen, I'm listening. I, I, I've already told you that if there was anything. If anybody that was trying to make a shot in that game, it was Kudus. I saw him try a couple of times, but it wasn't on target. It went off target. That's, yes. that's my point. But the defenders were also trying to defend. They couldn't. So, so I say he's so credit. Why, why Nicolas Opoku, who had the most passes in that game, mm -hmm. got less than Kudus is because he gave away a goal. Right. Why Joseph Edu? No, no, this one, this one is emo is, this yeah, one, this not, this one, emotional numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 what is saying to, to be fair, if a player makes a mistake that clearly, that yeah, leads yeah, to yeah, goal, yeah. it reduces his yes, yeah. I, I understand that. But I'm saying that, are you saying that Kudus's efforts was good enough to place him second highest ranking on, on, on your on your power ranking, if you like? That's what I'm saying. If right. there was any hope of Ghana scoring a goal, it, it was, was coming from, from the shots he was attempting. Also in the game, he completed the most dribbles alongside, um, I don't know whether it's Schindler or um, Elasha. Two out of uh, two and passes completed. And point well noted. Point well noted. Right. Point well noted. Thank you very much. Be bedroom Pep Guardiola has a message for us. <laughs> and then, uh, the apology I, I rendered. Uh, ben, we apologize. It's, it's, when there are some technical hitches, uh, it, there are things we, can, we don't have control over. So unfortunately, um, we're not able to... Um, uh, start as early as you would have expected, but we apologize. Uh, we are extremely, extremely sorry. Change is for, coming for what transpired. Yeah, so we'll bring you the change. And this one, hi Joy Prime. Good evening. Uh, watching you guys live from Upper West, uh, from Nimati Golu. Uh, Sakim is Sakim. That message from Sakim, and then uh, this one to uh, from Nana Kwame Benito from America House. That is good. Uh, but he says what. Uh, my third problem, we change coaches and players, but same results. <laughs> That's quite an interesting one. But let's talk briefly in two, three minutes about the Black Stars' Afcon chances. Considering the fact that it appears Chris Hutton is not inculcating any kind of confidence in many a Ghanaian that this is a team or that is capable of ending the 40 years of waiting to win the African Cup of Nations. Daniel has already given up, even though on game plan he said Ghana will win the, the Africa. No, me if you ask me, I'll say Ghana will win. As in, anybody will, can win. There are how many? Will, will, will Ghana win the Afcon? Yes, me I'll tell you they will win. Why? I'm not telling you that we'll win as in we'll actually win. I'm not <laughs> going to say anybody's country. That's what I'm saying. Okay. If you ask me, I'm I won't but Ghana can win. Go. Yes, it's only one team that will win. So out of the 24, 23 people will be wrong. Only one will be right. So that's cool. But we don't, I've said it earlier, we really don't have the, the we are not ready to go and conquer Africa as a stance. We can't do it. What we can do is to build. I think that the minimum requirement will be a round of 16. Minimum. That's, yes, that, that's what the group stages thing. It's not going to happen again. That one, I'm back. I can, I can put money on it. It's not going to happen again. Minimum 
will be round of 16. If we go quarter final, semi final, semi final will be huge. Quarter final, I'll take it like that. But minimum, we can't do anything less than round of 16. Round of 16 is the minimum. And again, the players must also start taking responsibility. We've changed. It's been Milo, it's been Otuado, it's been Chris Hutton. No, it's been start from CK. CK, Milo, mm -hmm. Milo, uh, Otuado, and then Chris. I will not start from CK. Milo, Otuado, and then Chris Hutton. Three. In the past, we are in what? October. In the last two years or so. Yeah, so in the past two years, because Milo came in was September in 2021. September 24, 2021. Yeah. So it's been two years. We've been chopping and changing coaches. But if you look at the core of the team, most of the guys here in this current team were the guys who were there. They need to start taking some responsibility. Look, when you go into a competition, and back then, let's not act like we had the names as compared to some of the teams in Africa. Aside SCN, aside Michael Essien, who in European football was a big boy, big name, our team really couldn't compare in terms of names and caliber. What we had was a team. We had a unit who were willing to go to a competition and play and die for the country. That's what we had, and that's what we had going for them. We didn't have better players than could have. The drug bears, the yeah, to raise the uh, uh, Solomon Carlos. These guys were playing at the biggest, uh, on the highest level. So... What we need is for players to take responsibility. They need to start taking responsibility. We can't have back-to-back -back 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 competitions where our star player is underperforming. 2019 AFCON, 2021 World Cup, we've not really seen the best of Thomas Partey. That can be a coach. You, also, you can also, also apply yourself. When you look at the performances of Mohamed Kudus, okay, nobody can fault him for anything that goes wrong at a, at a competition. Because clearly, when you see him on the pitch at a competition, you can tell that he's putting his efforts to succeed. And that's the sort of attitude that we need to, we need to promote. We saw, that, we saw it from the like those times. Christina Chu, Wakaso. We knew that when we go to an AFCON, these guys are going to do well. They were tournament guys. You get me? And that's what we need to reach with this kind of group of players. It is not enough to come and pose your numbers from Belgium and Sweden. We don't care. We care about what you are doing with the national team. So when they go to the competition, they also need to apply themselves. Sikyo, you, you, you said something that was quite interesting on Game Plan last week, Friday, which has to do with the mentality of, of the, the team. And I would like our viewers today to actually get that. But um, it appears Calvin you know, Ogusa has a problem with you. He said the Black Stars, they will disgrace you, pair. <laughs> It's been 40 years. You have less of confidence in the boys. But <laughs> that, that, that yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think listen, I've, I've said it before, and I've been saying it for a, a year and over. When I watch these boys wear the Black Star shirt, they play scared. They, played, they play afraid. They play like, I think mentally, mentally, the team is weak. But when you watch the Black Stars and they go down by a goal, you just know we are done. We are, your best is a draw. Like, you are playing against Morocco. Morocco gets some goal. One. You just know that we will struggle. You are playing against, you know... We saw it, we saw it at the World Cup. As soon as teams got goals against us, the next three minutes were catastrophic. I, and that is why I can't even imagine that we've been through this cycle and we don't have a team psychologist. Because quite clearly, the team is struggling mentally. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's so clear. It's, it's, I, I can't imagine how our handlers don't see it. I can't imagine how they are around the team all the time. But when the team was going to play against Uruguay, they didn't think that mentality and then the body language of the players weren't, weren't right. We saw it. In that first half against Algeria, uh, Uruguay, I should say, we were actually good in the first 10, 15 minutes. Until the penalty. We got a pen, we missed it, and we were completely dead from that point. That is mentality. You can't tell me Pate is not a good player, he's not talented. You can't tell me Kudu is not. You can't. The boys have got a certain level of talent. But when they put on that shirt, they play afraid, they play scared, they only perform to about half of their abilities. And that has to be something or somebody psyching them to be able to play with a bit more freedom and a bit more of, you know, swagger about, about their abilities. Otherwise, there is hope of minimum quarter. Look, we can go and lose to Cape Verde. We can also beat them. That's for Cape Verde, you are favorite too, mm -hmm. but you can go and lose to them. Mm -hmm. That's what Egypt, I think everybody's beginning to say that, oh, but it's a tournament, anything could happen. They, do, they just drew a couple of minutes ago against Algeria. A very good exercise for them against Algeria. Very good exercise ahead of the Afghan. Then you go in the game against Mozambique, and when the team is not mentally sound and tough, it will be like a Comoros. So I think that aspect of our team needs to be sorted out. The, the boys are just not playing with a, bit, uh, a lot of 
mental fortitude for me. No. And um, I think the the best thing, uh, like you all mentioned, it has to do with um, building the me mental fortitude of these boys because and maintaining the leaders in the team. Stop sacking the leaders. We were there in Nigeria. You remember the first half mm. in Nigeria where players were literally afraid for the ball to be passed to them. And they took a Jordan are you in the stadium over there to, hold on to, to the be ball. calling for the boy yeah. and telling the boys to calm down. That's what leaders do. It's not always about talent. Sometimes you need leaders. And we've always maintained the names. Thank Baba you. Man. The day are you. So, so they were not there. Mm. Baba Aman hasn't played lots of games in the last. Have you been? The day has, you see, it's a, the whole team that has a problem. Not single players who, when they come into the side, we put all the blame on them. Um, Bra Bello um, also s has an issue about uh, how we started the show late. We we apologize. Change is like coming. I mentioned, it's, it's a technical challenge, and uh, we'll, we'll sort that out uh, in our subsequent shows. And this one um, says, Philip from Takarade, he says that uh, the Black Stars didn't impress me at all. I'm not convinced about this team. That is uh, uh, Kwame from Tadi. This show uh, probably brought to you by Syntex. Uh, what is your preferred color of tank? Syntex has it. What guarantee do you want? Syntex has it. What kind of inner layer do you want? Double, triple, quadruple, as many layers as you want. Syntex has it too. So remember, no matter uh, your water needs, Syntex has a Syntex tank, a strong, a tough. We have over 300 agents nationwide, so you can order by calling 244 335168 or visit Syntex on social media at Syntex GH or uh, shop online on www.syntexgh.com. Uh, Syntex tank, a strong, a tough, and also. Do you like the sound free? Simply register with Pride Bet and you get to enter the free daily sports quiz to win 25,000 every day. What are you waiting for? Visit pridebet.com.gh now to play. All new players also get 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit. By Andy Agro with Pride Bet. Mm. Pride Bet, let's go. Regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. So with one Ghana series and a dream bet code for weekday, uh, weekday games, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday games, log on to pridebet.com.gh and click on Best Sleep. If you don't have a Pride Bet account, register now. And the Best Sleep enter in the best league, just enter the code 226GH and stick one Ghana series and stand a, win, a chance to win 20,000 Ghana series. That is your show for tonight. Once again, we apologize for the technical hitches we had earlier. Hopefully, next week, we come back stronger and better. See you and then the current thing with my guest tonight on Sports Zone. We appreciate your time.